Do GPS errors occur? They're certainly not supposed to, but as pilots, we're trained to always have a backup plan. Here we are flying IFR in the clouds, following a GPS route navigating off our Garmin 530. Now, there are a number of reasons our GPS could let us down, from spoofing to planned outages and the like, but for this scenario, let's say the problem is on our end and just kill our avionics to disable the Garmin. So what are we left with? I'm going to need you to indulge me with some imagination and pretend that even though yes, our Garmin 430 is still on, we're only going to be using the NAVCOM function on it and not the GPS. We only have our VOR for guidance now. Luckily, even with many VOR stations being decommissioned, the FAA is keeping some stations active and even augmenting their range as part of the Minimum Operational Network, or MON. Anywhere we are in the continental U.S., as long as we're at least 5,000 feet above a transmitter, we should be able to pick up at least one VOR within 100 nautical miles and use it to navigate onto an instrument approach that we can shoot using only VOR or ILS equipment. We can identify which to use in a pinch like this somewhat easily by looking for the green MON symbol above a nearby airport. Here's one at Binghamton Airport. It's designated a MON airport because it's close to a VOR station the Binghamton VOR DME. That's on 112.2. We can set that frequency onto our NAV2, which will show on the number 2 receiver. After letting ATC know of our issue and need to divert to Binghamton, we're cleared direct to the VOR at this altitude. After identing the station, we'll twist the OBS on the NAV2 to center the needle with a 2 indication. This is the heading we'll want to fly to track inbound. Now, which approach will we want to fly for this diversion? In our options, we see two that don't require GPS, both ILS approaches. Let's say the winds favor 3-4, so we'll select that one. And we can see that the Binghamton VOR has a feeder route from it leading to an initial approach fix, the Smite intersection. So we want to fly to Binghamton, then fly outbound on the 115 radial. After 11.1 .1 miles, we'll intercept the localizer, which is on 110.3. We'll fly that outbound, then perform the procedure turn to the south. Once we're inbound on the 340 approach course, we'll hold 3,700 feet until glide slope intercept and fly that down to the ILS decision altitude of 1851. Our missed approach also involves the VOR. We climb straight ahead to 2200, then make a climbing left turn to 3,900 direct to Binghamton and hold. There is one notum saying the autopilot coupled approaches aren't allowed below 1850, but there's no equipment we require beyond our VOR receiver, which is the point of the MON network. We don't even need DME. Even if our receiver wasn't able to do the glide slope of the ILS approach, we could still shoot this approach as a localizer only. Let's see it in action. We pass over the Binghamton VOR at 5,000 feet and turn right to a 115 heading. We twist our OBS to that course and want to fly to keep the needle centered with the from indication. We can descend on the feeder route to 4,200 feet. Things do get a bit tricky here as we look for a way to identify the smite intersection. We don't have DME, which we could have used as smite is at the 11.1 .1 DME from Binghamton. We don't have dual VOR receivers, so what we'll need to do is switch between the Binghamton VOR and localizer to determine when we're at intercept. We should estimate when this will occur. Based on our ground speed and distance, it should take us about five minutes to reach the localizer. We'll fly our 115 heading, making sure we're stable on the needle, and when we're close, we could switch over to the localizer flipping it active on NAV2. Once the needle comes alive, we can turn to our outbound course of 160. We can also descend to our altitude of 3,700. Now we set up for the procedure turn. First, we turn right, heading 205. We'll hold this heading for one minute, after which we'll make a left turn to 025 degrees, which will put us on an intercept of the localizer. When the needle comes alive, we turn left to the approach course of 340. Now we hold the heading and altitude at 3700 until intercepting glide slope. We'll configure for the approach and follow the needles all the way down to the decision altitude. Once we have field in sight, we transition to visual and make a smooth touchdown. So we've successfully managed this GPS failure in IMC with the help of the MON network. GPS failures can be caused both externally and internally, so it's just as important now as it was 20 or more years ago to stay sharp on your VOR skills. For more training insights, head over to the Flight Insight website linked here and in the description.